like the first time I told a girl that the first time I told a girl I love her she was like oh no and it was like wah, 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 wah. and then I was like get out <laughs> I was like get out man she was like what I was like get out get out I was like nah we, we ain't doing this man we ain't doing the no one way this is over she, she was like what? All right, guys, so you guys been really enjoying our breakdown between Carrie's relationship and Mr. Big's relationship. So today we're going to be doing our third part series, our third part, where we watch their whole relationship throughout the whole show. And we give you guys a breakdown as to what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. OK, so let's begin with the video. And if you guys want to attend my seminars, we're having one in London at the end of the month. And we're having a few other seminars in the United States. You can see the dates right here. So attend those seminars while I'm closing the channel. Okay? All right, let's begin with the video. That was the night we stopped being So in this scene, he promised her he was he was he he said he was gonna go meet his her friends after years of dating. And he said he wasn't gonna go. He backed off. And then he all of a sudden showed up. Now, in terms of a dramatic entrance, it's smart, right? You lower expectations and then you exceed it. But in terms of toxicity and, and doing that to somebody who, who likes you back and who cares about you, that is toxic as hell, Jesus Christ. <laughs> started becoming real. I was seeing big again. Unfortunately, my New York guy was still seeing other women. Oh, listen, my editor called me today. You, you, you know, people, sometimes... Look, and... <laughs> I don't know if I should say, I'll say this. Sometimes when we are, when we are in the presence of someone who we think they're better than us, you tend to tolerate this type of stuff. Because in your mind, you say, this is the best that I could do. So I'll rather deal with the few hits, with the, with, the, with the negative consequences, or because this is the best that I could do. That's why a lot of women stay with a lot of rich people who are toxic, who are not good for them, all because of their status in life. And so you let your self-esteem suffer all for, for a few scraps of validation all, or because you could say, hey, I'm dating this type of person, but there's a cost to it. Come on, man. And she's... Excuse me, you can't smoke that in here. I checked the zoning on this particular table, and I'm pretty sure this table's in a cigar-friendly zone. Well, I don't mind, but it's for the other patrons. You mean if those five patrons don't mind, it's okay with you? This is my last day on earth. Would you mind terribly if I smoke this, ladies? No. He's a... He's a... <laughs> I'd like to buy everybody a round of drinks. Apparently, the other patrons aren't bothered at all. You are very arrogant. I thought that's what you liked about me. Maybe we were at that inevitable point in the... She has a toxic trait that she has a toxic you see when women like this date guys who are toxic they tend to think the toxicity flows in one direction and they're a victim from it no she's an active participant if you choose to date men who are who are who every woman wants to date and they've shown you that they're not faithful you're gonna suffer like like who uh, what relationship when all those little things you loved about the other person become huge liabilities hey yeah it's almost like he is super attractive every woman wants him that's why you want him but also that's the one thing that's gonna make you that's gonna ruin the relationship sometimes you gotta date bob the builder bob the dentist bob the mechanic bob the electrician i hate that cigar and you told me right to my face Two hours later, I was supposed to meet Big at his place. Two and a half hours later, he showed up. <sighs> Say that again. I was supposed to meet... Hate that cigar. And you told me right to my face. Two hours later, I was supposed to meet Big at his place. Two and a half hours later, he showed up. Honestly, it, 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 it's, it's almost like she is okay with the disrespect. You know? It, it, it's almost like she's okay with it. 
And it's almost like she actually gets surprised when he doesn't respect her. So it just tells you her expectations in her mind. This is the type of relationship she feels like she deserves. And sometimes, man, it's like... It's like when you're when you were someone with him because he he thinks he's better than her. That that's what I think. He thinks he's better than her. He has a superiority complex, and and a lot of the times you tend to see that superiority complex most evidently in how much how how much people make you wait for when they're meeting. You see, whenever you're with someone and you're gonna meet with them like a business meeting and they're always late, you know what that says, right? That says that they think they're above you. You know that saying like Snoop Dogg's arrives at parties late? It's because he thinks, you know, it's because he knows he's the the life of the party. And so he arrives late and leaves early, right? But it, it, it's almost like what I notice is whenever anybody is consistently late, I, it, it's all it all comes from a superiority complex. Motherfucker, the bus is not always late. Like, it's consistently, 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 honestly. And I've stopped being friends with some people because, not be stopping being friends, but I've pulled away with from some people because they can never even, they can never be on time, not even to their own parents' funeral. It's like, dude, girl, God, God damn, it's not that difficult. Sorry. You're a half hour late. Your doorman thinks I'm a hooker. Did you make any money? Bruh. I hate waiting here for you. There's a coffee shop. It, it's one thing for you to be late one time, but all the time? She, he's lucky she's not my client. Uh, around the corner. You could have waited. In. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm pissed. Thank you. Well, you know, Good if job. You gave me a key. And she went, she, she bluffs. Look, ladies, it's better for you to sh keep it to yourself than to bluff because because when you start bluffing it looks pathetic I, i'm just gonna be honest with you when you start bluffing and, and and taking back your threats it just looks pathetic i could wait upstairs next time a key or you could stay at my place sometime but then i like my bed if this was all i was ever going to this has to be a joke man honestly like I was, I was at first i thought it was just like a a part of the sh like if not natural progression, but this is getting ridiculous at this moment, man. This is like, this lady's out of control. Get out of bed. Was it enough for me? Somewhere between sleep and waking, I got my answer. Oh, damn it! Oh, oh, are you alright? No! Oh my god. What the hell was that? You knocked me out of bed. You didn't even know I was here. Well, I do now. Where are you going? I sleep on the couch. You just let me explain. Don't talk now. It, 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 it's like, how can I say it? But I couldn't sleep. I decided he couldn't sleep either. The other night... One of the best things... Well, I, personally, there's no reason for him to overreact and to get on the couch. If I was her, and he was, and he, and he didn't understand that that was a... Because, I mean, you shouldn't hit someone, but to overreact that way and, and almost gaslight her as a result... It, and, and then on top of all the things he does come on. That's some bullshit. It wasn't just about the cigar. It never is. I hate that you look at other women. I hate that I don't have a key to your... Stop trying to control him and leave, woman. Place. You've never spent the night at my place. You can't even make space for me in your bed. And it's not your fault because I never say it. So now I punched you, so now I have to say it. I'm back in your life and nothing has really changed. And I know you can't change a man and you definitely can't change a man like you. But I still want... S something to change a little bit for me the only thing that could change is you leaving stop being hard-headed god oh my god man physical violence is never the answer i'm gonna go i realized you could change a man you could change him into not calling you i'm sorry get uh, your motherfucking hand out of my face I just came over to tell you something maybe you need a key to know that i'm crazy about you the thing is i've given out like Five keys. And, and, and maybe I, I, I hog my bed. But I mean, it's my bed. Well, I like you in it. Now, this is something I don't like about you. I hate that you eat oranges in my bed. They're sticky and they make the sheets stink. That's it? I like my sheets. What are you going to give me for the oranges? A negotiation. Yep. Well, this could take a while. Well, it looks like I may have to spend the night. That night, 
for the first time, Big spent the night at my place. I realized that neither of us would ever fundamentally change. It, it's insane. It, 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 I'm going to tell you something, man. She thinks this is a part of his personality. And that's what a lot of ladies who watch this also think, right? They think, oh, he's cold. He disrespects me. It's not because he doesn't like me, but because he he's hurt. He's been through a lot. He 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 hasn't recovered from his traumas. And so you 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 rationalize the fact that he doesn't like you and you allow yourself to start chasing someone all because you think they're hurt, but but that you can never consider the fact that he just doesn't like you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not Bob the Builder. You're not Oprah, all right? You, you gotta leave when somebody is not ready for you. This guy, I could promise you, if he dated a woman he actually liked, a woman who actually genuinely, who he liked from the start and wasn't like iffy about it, he would not act this way. He would not act this way. A lot of the times, a guy acts like this all because he's half-assed about you. And how do I know? Because it's happened to me, okay? I've dated women who were dumb, with what with dumb, with some women. They were the sweetest girls. And I'll be honest with you, I think back and I regret. I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I regret the way I treated some girls. I, I really do. And I, I wasn't abusive, people, okay? But I wouldn't tell them that I really, I, I didn't like them that much. All because they were so hot, right? But I regret it. Because they were sweet people. They didn't deserve to be waiting for nothing, you know? Like, I, I regret that. But... If, that, if those same women would notice how I would react to a girl that I really liked and they would talk and they would say, so, Alexis doesn't let you sleep over, right? They'll be like, he asks me all the time to sleep over. What are you talking about? She'd be like, for real? With me, he never lets me sleep over. And then she'd be like, for real? That, that's weird. That's not that's not like him. And they'll be shocked. And then the next day, I'll find my, 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 my tire slashed. People have a different personality depending on how much they like you. Just like people have a different personality depending on the language they speak. So it's the same thing, man. Like you, you, you may only, you may be seeing his cold side, and 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 if you accept that, you're pretty much telling to him he's better than you. You're telling him he's better than you. And this is the thing, a lot of people find themselves in this situation, right? Now, for example, let's just say your granny, your evil grandma is dating a really hot grandpa from out the block, right? And he is giving granny the holy dizzy, but he is treating her like Mr. Big treats Carrie. And you might say to yourself, how do I save granny? How do I save her from a early death? Because Mr. Big is giving the holy dizzy, but not giving her any commitment. Well, with that, I will, all, I will honestly recommend her check out this promo about purchasing my bundle deal where you could purchase my all of my courses while being able to get a one-on-one -on -one call with me and hopefully saving granny from an early death. <laughs> so have granny watch this. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this is the first time I'm ever going to offer this. All right. And it's a bundle, <laughs> look at my dog right here. <laughs> and it's a bundle deal to purchase all of my courses while being able to have a talk with me. So the way that this works is that you guys can purchase a psychological game of attraction, natural chemistry, and nice girl while being able to purchase a 15 minute call with me. Um, so naturally a 15 minute call is $99 for the meantime people until I start classes again, uh, which will go out when I start classes. But now you'll be able to do that at 50% off all while being able to purchase my, my first three courses that I ever created. These courses are pretty much everything you need in terms in terms of your dating life so it's all you get everything at 249 now the way that the, the that this works is that the reason why i created this is because usually the best results come from people talking to me on the phone and then watching my courses now i always tell people purchase my courses first right but some people have individual situations that they need guidance in so this is the opportunity to be able to get all three things while being able to talk to me okay so click on the description down below purchase it in purchase it while it's limited before i start classes again and i'll see you guys inside even though he might love her deep down he thinks he's better than her that is just an undeniable truth and the way you know that's by, by his behavior when you give people when we all have a certain personality type depending on 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 where we stand socially when we think we're superior to someone 
we have a certain personality type. When we think we're inferior to someone, we also have a certain personality type. When we think we're equal to each other, then you also have a certain personality type. And that's all based on how you were raised and on your biology. So we have a personality type when we, f when we, f when we find a friend who's, who's superior than us. And we also have a different personality type when we find a friend who are, when we find a partner who's, who we think is superior than us. And the way you break that cycle is to start acting consciously. In other words, this behavior happens because there's an automatic reaction, right? When you start acting consciously, you stop acting out of habit. Like for example, you usually breathe. It's a it's a it's a conscious it's an unconscious thing, right? Or even better yet, right? Um, like I've learned that if you want to stop smoking or you want to stop a habit, most habits come because they're automatic, right? But if you start doing the habit like smoking or eating, which is something that's automatic and compulsive, if you just start doing it consciously, all of a sudden it stops being a habit. And over time, when you rather than eating compulsively, you consciously eat. You notice every breath, you notice every every bite, every taste. That thing that you should be used to be a, compul a compulsion because you're bringing consciousness it doesn't it becomes a, a, a it loosens its grip on you and it doesn't become a habit it loses its compulsion that's why being present is so important because by you learning to be present you stop acting compulsively you stop acting out of habit those habitual neural networks in your brain that causes you to act compulsively just act out those act that compulsion but just with more consciousness that's why yogis or monks a lot of them don't have addictions and the reason why is because their day is pretty much made of made out of conscious habits like you wake up everything's conscious you move and that is conscious right so you bring pure conscious intent into your habitual behavior and all of a sudden you gain control over them so when you breathe when you move when you drink your coffee even when you do addictive things do it with as much consciousness as you can breathing noticing what you're doing noticing the movement and by you bringing pure consciousness and just deep awareness to the habitual things that you do compulsively it loosens that compulsive energy over you that's what the yogis do that's what the monks do their days are made out of habit for example a yogi had the habit of going to to the market to get chips because he couldn't stop eating the chips and he told his master that and the master told him go buy your chips and he was shocked he was like what what do you mean by that he was like buy your chips and bring it back bring five but and eat it as many times as you want just make sure when you eat it don't don't go crazy just do it consciously and slowly he's like really he's like yeah just bring consciousness to the habitual behavior lo and behold after a few weeks the monks stopped eating the chips and that's why all of these ch monks all of these yogis in those meditation ashrams they don't have any habit because they imbued their day with so much consciousness every movement is conscious every movement of the hand is conscious that if it, it removes even even if the behavior is compulsive you bring consciousness to the compulsion so with her this role playing that she's doing is an unconscious habit she may not even be aware of it she in fact we're watching this situation and if she ponders why her relationships are, are like this she may not know why honestly she may say i don't know why my life is like this it's because she's not she doesn't bring consciousness she's she's operating through projections which are fantasies so just bring, bring consciousness breathe, become aware of your breath if you want a good meditation just breathe and feel as though your forehead this your third eye is breathing in feel the air coming into your forehead Make that a meditation, even as you walk. When you breathe in, feel as though there's breathing into your forehead and breathing out of your forehead. You'll notice your consciousness elevates. It's unbelievable. And you could break habits through that. And if you want to learn about this, you could purchase my course, Emotional Mastery, which we talk about this. It's a, it's a six week course on mindfulness meditation and how to do this in your daily life. But what she needs to do is bring con full consciousness into her life. And I recommend a lot of times going to meditation retreats 
as like a as like a way to boost to turbocharge and to give you like a boost so that I can, so that you can practice this more easily but let's keep watching but we were talking about it and maybe that was the biggest change of all the first time I realized I actually loved Big was over toast and coffee one morning. Oh, that's right. What? Big was picking me up to take me out to dinner. Hey, hi. Okay, okay. Yeah. I saw it and thought of you. It was just wrong. I love you. And what did he say? Well, he just sort of reacted stunned for a moment, and then he said... You're welcome, Paul. Uh... You know, I told a girl that one time I love her. Was, God, I was so embarrassing. She was like, oh, God, people. You guys are going to laugh at Father Addicts, man. I never told anyone this. And she was like, man, this is, this is what she said, man, when I told her that. Like, the first time I told a girl that, the first time I told a girl I love her, she was like, oh, no. And it was like, wah, 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 wah. and then I was like, get out. <laughs> I was like, get out, man. She was like, what? I was like, get out, get out. I was like, nah, we, we ain't doing this, man. We ain't doing the, no one way. This is over. She, she was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, get out. <laughs> It's over. It's over. I'm sorry. Like, like it's over. You, you were giving me the eyes, and I thought it was the right eyes. And now you say, oh, no, motherfucker. You're saying, oh, no. Get out of here, man. Like, then, oh, no, get out. How about that? Oh, God. All right, let's keep watching this, man. I'll just wait for you outside. A mere two days after I had said I love you, Big had found his own way to say I love you to me. There's something I've been meaning to tell you ever since the night I He's even wearing red. That became the first night I wanted to tell Big I hate you. Oh, we can stop right here, man. This is um like I wish I could just possess her body and like a demon and just not because I'm gay, but just to show her how how to do it because Christ have mercy, like. Did Matthew Hussey exist even then? Like, this is unbelievable the things that she's doing, man. Like, it's it's like, it's like if you do this, don't tell people you watch my channel. Tell them you watch somebody else's channel because this is just pure barbarity, man. My Lord have mercy, man. Um, anyways, man, if you guys enjoyed this, um, we're gonna do the last part um, tomorrow. This was a this was a roller coaster. It was unbelievable, man. It's like Melissa times ten to the umph. Um, real st stuff, man. Um, if you guys want to work with me one on one, click on the description down below. Um, tickets are selling fast for the London seminar, so purchase those tickets. And don't forget, these are the t these are the dates for when we're going to London. I mean, for when we're going to all of the other parts of the country for our seminar in in, in the United States. Um, and yeah, man. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.